The absolutely insane year of 2020 is almost over and boy has it been a ride. But before the year ends, it's incredibly important for us to use the intensity of this energy to clean up some stuff and prepare you for a new life in 2021. In this video, we're going to review the major themes for the energy of 2020 and what that year has brought us. And then I'm going to share a top spiritual practice for you to do before the year ends so you can start 2021 with a clean slate and fresh energy. Coming up. Hello beautiful soul, this is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one of the video, the energy themes for 2020. <laughs> so let's review some of the themes, what's gone on from a spiritual perspective and energy perspective throughout 2020. It's been an incredibly intense year. And uh, so I wanted to share some themes and kind of what's been going on behind the scenes, kind of underneath the surface of all the chaos that we've seen in our outer world, all right? So one of the first themes for 2020 I like to use the metaphor of the wildfire. So 2020 has been like a freaking wildfire, a raging wildfire that just, just that just blows through the forest and burns everything down. That is the, the, the theme, the energy signature of 2020. And what that has meant for us is that literally for so many of us, thousands upon thousands of us, that have awoken in 2020 because of all the things happening on the planet. This wildfire uh, energy, type of energy, it literally came through and for so many people, it burned everything down from relationships, people lost their jobs. I mean, it, it, was, it was just chaos in a lot of people's lives. Everything in their life fell apart, all right, for so many people in, 20, uh, in 2020. And this is precisely because of this big ascension, this big energy shift that was going on by the planet herself. So the planet herself has shifted energy and because we're standing on top of her, we've got to shift with her. So this is a co-evolution between us and planet Earth. And so this wildfire type of energy, it came in, it came in really quickly and it came in really intensely. So, so the metaphor for 2020, for 2020 is definitely the wildfire and this has been true in so many people's lives. One interesting aspect of this wildfire metaphor is that, again, a wildfire comes through and it burns everything down. And one of the particularities that has happened in, 20, uh, in 2020 based on this wildfire type of energy is that it came in and it burned everything down, meaning even the things that we swept under the rug, ding, ding. <laughs> So 2020 was an incredibly important year because for so many of us, we had things that were unresolved from the past, patterns, behaviors, beliefs, things that we have sw that we had swept under, under the rug. We all do this, right? We all do this, we're all human. We all have this little bit of a tendency to sweep certain things under the rug and just keep moving on as if it's not there. And so that tendency that we all have, it was completely decimated with 2020 because imagine if I sweep something under the rug and then a wildfire comes, what the hell's gonna happen? <laughs> the rug is gone. So literally what this wildfire type of energy did was it burned my rug. And so all of the things I had swept underneath, they were exposed, okay? And this is probably one of the most painful aspects of this wildfire type of energy for 2020 was that it exposed all of the things inside of us that we have been unwilling to deal with, to challenge, to face, and to heal, all right? And so the, it came with such an enormous intensity that suddenly all the stuff I had swept under the rug, it, it became exposed because the rug was burned by the wildfire. And so all of it became exposed, 
but it can be painful. But the flip side of this is that it's wonderful because once something is exposed, it can burn down too. <laughs> you see, that's the wonderful thing about this wildfire is that it comes through and it burns not only the rug, but all the stuff in the dirt that was underneath the, the rug, but it has to be exposed first. And that was one of the most painful aspects of 2020 was people were being faced and confronted with patterns, beliefs, trauma, old things that they had swept under the rug and they hadn't, hadn't really dealt with on a deep level. All right. So that's one of the themes for 2020. A second theme for 2020 was acceleration. So the energy in 2020 picked up a lot, a lot of velocity. And just like a wildfire, this acceleration is also really intense because what it does is it speeds things up. And so going back to the example that I just shared about someone wanting to sweep something under the rug and then suddenly a fire comes and the whole rug is burned and all of it is exposed. That also speaks to the acceleration part of it, because what happened in 2020 was I wasn't just exposed to one belief I had or one past trauma that I hadn't resolved or one issue that my heart hadn't resolved. I was exposed to all of them at the same time. <laughs> And this had to do with the acceleration of the energy. What the energy is doing is it's asking us to deal with our stuff a lot more quickly than we have in the past. And that acceleration also adds to the intensity, but also the level of awareness that we need to be in, in order to do this healing work, because a lot of things are coming up at the same time. Another theme for 2020 that I've been talking about significantly throughout the year in many of my videos was a shift to feminine energy. All right. And I shot a video on this. So I'm not going to get too, uh, too much into it. Cause I shot a whole video on the new energy that was coming onto the planet on the heels of the coronavirus. I shot a whole video on it and what it meant. I'll leave links to that video in the description box below. If you want to watch and go deeper after this one, but basically what has happened in 2020 was literally the planet herself went from masculine dominant energy. So the energy that we've been in is masculine dominant. We've been in the masculine dominant energy for thousands of years and the planet from just one day to the next, almost one day to the next, it was within, within a few weeks there in the beginning of the year when the coronavirus stuff really started to kick up and the, and the quarantine started to kick up the planet literally in a few weeks went from masculine dominance to feminine dominant energy on the planet. And it was this shift to feminine dominance. It's one of the reasons why we've had so much turmoil in 2020, because the shift was so quick that we were, our whole energy systems were now required to know how to step into a feminine dominant energy when we weren't used to it. And so that's why a lot of the chaos ensued on the planet, because what happened, what happened was the shift from masculine to feminine, it wasn't pretty. And a lot of times, especially for those of us that are unawakened, when there's a shift like that, when the masculine is called to go into feminine energy, it, it sometimes isn't pretty. It causes a lot of outer chaos because the masculine will not want to let go of control. And so that can cause a lot of violence, things happening in the outer environment that has to do with the masculine energy, not wanting to disarm and relax. Okay. And so we saw that across the world in multiple fronts. Um, and so this energy shifting to feminine dominance is a part of the evolution of the planet herself. And as I've talked about in recent videos, this shift to feminine dominance is going to remain for the rest of our lives and probably beyond. This is a recalibration of energy on the planet in order to balance things out. And so just like a pendulum, when a pendulum swings one way, it's got to swing the other way in equal proportion. And it just keeps swinging and swinging before it rests in the middle. All right. And so right now what we're witnessing is a swinging towards feminine dominant energy, which is a necessary step in the recalibration of the energy that we've been in, in the last, I would say a couple thousand, maybe more than a couple thousand years. All right. So it's been a long time of masculine dominance. And so this shift, it's been both beautiful, but also challenging because what it has required of all of us is whether we're women or men, because remember, we all have masculine and feminine energy within us. 
And what this major shift in energy towards the feminine has been asking us to do is to learn or relearn to retrieve the feminine component of our inner energy and know how to work with it, especially know how to work with it when it is a dominant energy now on the planetary grid herself. Okay. And so this has been a challenge for many of us, especially for those of us that naturally have masculine dominance. <laughs> and we're pretty much all templated to be masculine dominant on the planet, whether we're women or men. So this has been a little bit of a challenge to now swing and learn how to use feminine energy where we were so used to using masculine energy before. All right. So that's another major theme for 2020, but again, I'm not going to get too much deeper into that. I did a whole video on that. So the links are below a whole video. If you want to go deeper on the particularities of what this actually means to go from masculine to feminine dominant energy and how you can work with that energy. Another interesting thing about 2020 was what it did was it essentially, it, it was almost like there were two groups of people, uh, kind of living out 2020, two different groups of people. And the first group, they were going through an intense awakening. All right. So 2020 was probably one of the most awakening type of energy that's been, that's been on the planet, probably in my whole lifetime. So what happened in 2020 was this whole shift in energy that we've been talking about, it triggered mass awakenings to millions of people on the planet at the same time. And, and I got to tell you, I really got exposed to this group because you know, 2020 was a skyrocketing year for my YouTube channel. And it was precisely because thousands upon thousands of people started to reach my channel because they had spontaneous awakenings during the energy of 2020. All right. And so this first group of people, these are the people, a lot of them are watching my videos now. Maybe it's you watching this video. This is the group of people that went through an intense awakening in 2020. And so their whole lives sometimes just exploded. They fit their whole lives went just upside down, belly up things shifted. They had spontaneous awakenings. They realized they were having a spiritual awakening when they didn't even know when they didn't even have the term spiritual awakening in their vocabulary or didn't even think about it. I've had so many people reach out to me in 2020 saying that, that all of these things were happening to them and they didn't know they didn't have a term for it. They thought they were simply going crazy or having a midlife crisis or something. But then when they found my videos, they realized it was a spiritual awakening. So there's this group of people that went through a mass awakening in 2020. And then there's a second group of people. There's also a lot of them are on my YouTube channel. There's a second group of people. And these were the people that were called to hold the light. Okay. And these are the people who had been on their spiritual path for quite a while. Their spiritual awakening started way before, sometimes years and years before 2020. And so they were a little bit ahead of the path than the people who were newly awakened in 2020. They had done a lot of inner work. They were on their spiritual path for a while. And so when 2020 came along, the, the universe was basically asking of this second group to hold the light for everyone else going through turmoils and awakening, uh, and awakening all, all, you know, anew. All right. And so this second group of people, these light workers, these old souls, they were the, the added complex to this group is that they were not only asked to hold the light while the whole world went to hell in a handbasket <laughs> around them, but 2020, the intensity of 2020 also affected them. So they were asked to hold the light on the one hand, because they were a little bit more ahead on their spiritual path. They were asked to hold the light while also having to deep dive into stuff that wasn't resolved in them going deeper in their healing, going higher in their ascension process. So essentially this group had a little bit of a challenging year, myself included in this group, in the second group, because what was happening to those of us in the second group is we were holding the light and we were doing our own evolutionary work at the same time. And so this was very challenging for the second group, but we were prepared. Uh, everyone in the second group is prepared and has the tools to be able to do these two jobs at the same time. All right. And so these are kind of the two groups of people and what was happening to both of them during 2020. 
Now on to part two of the video, what to do before 2021. <laughs> so here comes that spiritual practice that I had, that I had promised you. And, and this spiritual practice I use every single year. And what's important to, to remember before doing these types of spiritual practices is that when you're doing an end of year practice, it's important to realize and utilize the energy, the particularities of the energy that are, that are making themselves known in that year. All right. And so as we already talked about in 2020, there was a couple of things that were important about this energy. First, the intensity and then the acceleration. All right. So intensity plus acceleration basically. That's really that wildfire energy. That's the particularity of 2020 energy. And so the intensity and the acceleration, it came in and it's helping us get rid of things and see everything that was under the rug with a lot of clarity because it's all coming up to the surface and it's all coming up very quickly. And so this intensity and this acceleration is allowing us to heal and let go of things in a, it just at a speed that we have never been able to do on this planet. So that's one of the beautiful, beautiful side effects of 2020 is that we have been able to work through and we can let go in 2020, let go of things that would have taken us lifetimes to work through in past energies. All right. So that's the wonderful thing about, about this energy, but we have to learn how to work with it. Okay. And so working with the intensity and acceptance acceleration of the energy means that I'm going to leave a little ding, ding <laughs> pro tip, slight warning, <laughs> but pro tip, because I don't want to scare you. So pro tip here is that when we have energies that are so intense and so accelerated, the, the question, the affirmation to always have in the back of your mind is to not take any burdens forward to 2021. <laughs> okay. Don't take any burdens or any old stuff, any junk forward to 2021, because the energy is still going to stay. It's still going to stay accelerated into 2021. And so really, if you're, if you're trying to hold on to dear life, to old things that no longer serve you, that are no longer in alignment, because that's what these energies, these intense and accelerated energies, that's what they do. They expose everything that is not in alignment alignment with your soul so that you can see it and heal it and let go. All right. And so when these intense years come in, don't carry anything forward because it's going to be torturous on your energy system because the energy itself is going to try to be tearing it out of you. And if you're holding on for dear life, you're going to create a really intense resistance energy, kind of fight like energy between you and the universe, you and the planet guess who's going to win that? <laughs> so what I tell people is please don't set up resistance between yourself and the collective energy, the energy on the planet that that's coming in. Don't set up resistance. Just let go work with the energy. Let go, let go, let go. Don't walk into 2021 with any burdens on your back. Now, the reason I'm focusing on this is because not just 2020, but I'm already giving you a look into 2021 and moving forward. The energy on the planet is going to increasingly be more crystalline, what's called crystalline. And what that means is that the energy on the planet, the energy grid of the planet herself is going to keep going up and up and up in energy frequency, which means we have to match it. And what it means to be what crystalline energy does among many things, what crystalline energy does, here's an affirmation for you to remember a mantra for you to remember crystalline energy demands truth. <laughs> All right. Remember this affirmation crystalline energy demands truth, meaning that from here on in, it's going to be virtually impossible for you to lie to yourself and to the world. Okay. So, so anything that's not true, anything that's not in alignment with your soul, it's going to be practically impossible for you to hold on to that as the planetary energy becomes more and more crystalline, because again, crystalline energy demands truth. So it means that moving forward, 
the energy is going to challenge you to stand in your truth, to be in your truth and to express your truth outwardly in the form of words and actions to stand in your truth, in your own soul alignment, what your soul is here to do, whatever the costs. And sometimes for many of us, the costs can seem high. Like I'll lose a relationship. I have to walk away from a relationship that no longer serves me, or I have to walk away from a career, or I just sell my house and I leave, I go somewhere else. So for, for a lot of us, the consequences of living in my truth is going to mean some significant changes in the outside. But again, I'm leaving this to you here as this, just this beautiful, beautiful reminder. Now is the time to align with that crystalline grid so that you don't have to, you know, so that things don't have to change in your life while you're kicking and screaming because it's so much more painful that way. Again, the crystalline grid is more powerful than you, than your free will of the human self. And so just go with the crystalline grid. It demands truth and your soul is going to be coming through more and more. Your soul energy is going to be coming through more and more and also pushing you into that crystalline type of energy. Um, all right. So, so this is a little bit of, um, this is a little bit of advice to just be in your truth more and more and more discover what your truth is. Don't be afraid of standing in your power and of showing that power and of showing your true self out in the world. So using the metaphor of the wildfire again, let's use that imagery to kind of reinforce what I've just said here. When a wildfire comes through, imagine a wildfire comes through and it burns everything down in your neighborhood, including your house. So everything is burnt down. All right. And you come back to the site of the wildfire after it's got, after it's ravaged through, it would never occur to you to start rebuilding your old house with the charred burnt wood that you're that, uh, that's sitting on the floor from your old house. It would never dawn on you to rebuild a new house with charred old wood that was just burned from a wildfire, right? What would you do? You start building your house again from scratch. Okay. Building from scratch with new materials. And that metaphor is essentially what's happening now. Don't carry anything into 2021. Don't carry your burned charred pieces of wood from your old house into 2021. All right. Meaning don't carry old burdens that have been exposed in 2020. Don't carry them into 2021. All right. So there's the use of that, of that wildfire metaphor to hopefully reinforce the importance of doing these healing things before the year ends. Okay. So now on to the beautiful practice that I love to use, especially in intense year like this. So the first thing that I do is I prepare space. All right. So this is, this is very ceremonial. I, I prepare my space. I uh, cleanse the space by burning incense or Palo Santo. So I use sacred smoke a lot. I have some candles and I do this nice and slowly. I do this nice and slowly. So I'll usually dedicate a whole, maybe a couple of hours, two to three hours at night. I love to do this ceremony stuff at night because that's the energy of the feminine, which is very conducive to healing. And I'll just go nice and slow with a lot of patience. I'll clear my space out. I'll have some candles out. I turn the lights off. I have some music going. Maybe I'll, I'll be drumming with my drum. I'll be listening to shamanic drumming. And so I prepare space. Maybe I have some essential oil, some aromatherapy, whatever you want to do, whatever it means to you to prepare space. Maybe I put some strategically place some crystals in the room that I'm doing uh, this work in whatever it means for you to prepare space, do that. But the preparation of space, what it does is it creates, it funnels energy, it concentrates energy. The more intention and energy I dedicate to the preparation of space, the more I channel energy in and the more I channel energy in the quicker the healing uh, can occur. All right. So that's the first step in, in this practice is to prepare space with a lot of love, a lot of tenderness, nice, slow, and easy. And a side note here on preparing ding, ding side note here on preparing space space that I forgot to mention as I am preparing space. So let's say I'm moving around, I'm preparing the space, I'm lighting the candles, I'm dancing a little bit, I'm drumming, I'm, I'm moving around with, uh, with sacred smoke, clearing out the space as I'm preparing space. I'm also mentally either mentally or out loud. Sometimes I say this out loud. 
I'm already focusing on the intention, all right? And so for this particular practice, for this particular spiritual practice that I'm describing here, my intention really is to clear out and heal whatever I need to heal from 2020 and be ready to welcome the new, all right? So I'll walk around my room with my sacred smoke or as I'm drumming and I'll either say in my mind or out loud, I'll keep repeating that I'm doing this to clear out the old and welcome the new energy of 2021. I'm doing this to clear out the old and welcome the new energy of 2021. And I'll just keep repeating this intention as I'm preparing space. Then what I do in, in step two is I take note. All right. So this is where, uh, my space is prepared. My candles are going. I have some music going. Maybe I've already done some dancing. Maybe I've already done some drumming. So I've done, I've done that initial part uh, of the practice. And then I'm going to grab my journal and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start to, to, to journal. I journal a lot during the ceremony. And what we're journaling about is we are taking stock of everything that's happened to us in 2020, specifically the significant things that happened to us. Maybe we had certain patterns come up to the surface that we thought were healed. Maybe a relationship disintegrated. Maybe I lost my job. Maybe whatever it is, you're going to start to write down and journal about all of the significant things that happened in 2020, all of the significant things, whether it's just beliefs that came up to the surface or whether it's as severe as you losing your relationship or walking out on a relationship, Whatever it is, you're going to start to journal the significant happenings throughout 2020. All right. Especially taking note to the things that were challenging because it's through those challenging things that you can then, uh, have that metamorphosis and come into it, uh, come into this new energy with renewed, um, with a renewed sense of healing and, and power. All right. But here's a little ding, ding side note. Okay. When we're doing this type of healing, uh, exercise, we're not just taking note of the challenges, the horrible things that happened, the chaotic things that happened to me in 2020. It's also really important to take note of all the wonderful things, all of the beautiful things that happened in 2020, because it's not all bad. It never is. All right. And so this, this kind of balances out the energy and it also starts us on a practice of gratitude, learning to be grateful, even for the little things, learning to be grateful, even sometimes for the painful things that happened in our, happened in our lives, because those painful things very frequently are the fuel that triggers significant transformation that, that then we move on to live happier, more fulfilling lives. All right. So journal these two things. Yeah. Journal about the challenging things that you were learning through and healing through, but also journal about the wonderful things that you're grateful for. Even if it's just small things, it doesn't matter, but write down some things, some wonderful things that happened in 2020 that you're very grateful for. That's really important in balancing this journaling exercise. The third step is to decide. <laughs> okay. So after you finish your, your journaling, uh, part of this, of this practice, then you're going to have to use the power of your discernment to decide what you want to keep and what you want to let go of moving forward. All right. People really underestimate the power of decision, but your power as a sovereign, sovereign spiritual being is extraordinary. And when you make a decision, decisions and discernment are so incredibly healing and incredibly transformative in your life that when you make a decision, it just, the whole energy of the universe starts to move in response to your decision. All right. So use this time, look at your journal and everything that you've written and start to decide what you want to keep and what you want to let go of, because you, you don't want to let go of everything. Not everything that happens in a year is bad. There are some wonderful things that you want to take into 2020 with you. So just decide which is which and make that decision in a very, very clear way. Step number four then is to intend healing. So once I make the decision on what things I want to keep and carry forward to 2021 and which ones I want to let go of, then I bring in the intention to heal, which is incredibly powerful. So I'll usually get up again. Maybe I've been sitting, doing my journaling stuff, making my decisions and all that. Then I get up and I, I like to do this intention, this healing intention. I like to do this a lot through movement. So I'll get up again, I'll grab my drum or I'll put some shamanic music on again and, and the music will start and I'll start to move my body. I'll start to drum, move my body. I like to create intention through the body 
The body is an incredible uh, spiritual tool that you can use to help you uh, in focusing on your healing and intention. So when I start to focus on that intention to heal through my body, it channels an enormous amount of energy, okay? And my intention is very clear. I want to turn all of the lessons and all of the experiences of 2020 into wisdom and higher knowledge. Ding, ding. This is, this is what a spiritual master does. A spiritual master takes everything that happens to them, whether good or bad, they take everything that happens to them and they turn it into wisdom and higher knowledge. Okay. And so that's my intention here while I'm doing this, I'm dancing, I'm drumming, I'm thinking thinking about the decisions that I've just made in my journal, what I want to carry and what I don't. And then I intend to move into healing with all of that. I intend to heal on a body level also, not just on soul level, but on a body level. All right. And that intention when, as I'm moving, what I'm doing is I'm essentially getting that wisdom and higher knowledge to go deeper and deeper and deeper into every cell of my being. The more I move as I'm intending to heal, when I move uh, with the intention, the wisdom and the higher knowledge actually gets programmed in my cells a lot faster. Okay. So there's a little pro tip for you. Um, so move, uh, don't just do this part of the, this part of the exercise, sitting down by your journal, start to move, start to dance, use a drum. If you have one, or just use some shamanic music going on there, move your body and that'll, that'll program the intention to heal and the wisdom and the higher knowledge that you've acquired in 2020. It'll program it in your body. Step number five is welcoming. All right. So this is the last step of the practice of the spiritual practice. And now what you're going to do, you've probably been dancing a little bit. As I was describing above, you were dancing, you were doing some drumming, you were, you were kind of programming the wisdom and the inner knowledge of 2020 into your cells, all the things that you've learned, all the things that you want to carry forward in the things that you want to release. So you were doing that through drumming and intention and movement. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go into the last phase, which is the welcoming. All right. So once I work through all the lessons of 2020, once I, once I incorporate all those lessons and turn them into wisdom and higher knowledge, now I release the stuff, right? I release everything in 2020. I let go of the year now that I've worked with the energy and now I'm welcoming, I'm going into a welcoming energy, a receptive energy for 2021. And here's a pro tip on how to do this. <laughs> One of my favorite ways of doing this is working with the body. Like like I just said a little while ago, right? And so the way that I open up to new energy through the body is by using uh, the chest. Okay. So what I do is I'll sometimes I'll, I'll either put my arms up in the air or I'll just open my chest. Okay. The more you open your chest and your arms out wide, the more you're triggering this heart chakra to crack open and to come more into receptive mode. So I like to use this type of body movement is chest extension, chest opening as I'm doing the, the welcoming intention. So I can say something like, you know, I'm ready. I just let go of all the energy of 2020 and I'm ready for 2021. And I, and I do this as I'm opening my chest, you could do this dancing. So you can just do a lot of back extensions, chest extensions as you're dancing while you're repeating the mantra of, you know, I'm ready to welcome new energy. I'm ready to welcome new energy. I de armor. I let go of all the baggage. I de armor and I'm ready to open up. Okay. So I like to use the, this body movement of chest opening to kind of get your energy ready for the welcoming of new of the new. All right, beautiful soul. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, what specifically are you letting go of before 2021? Let me know in the comments. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website and download my popular guided meditations. And don't forget the video I described in this one. That'll be a great one for you to watch next. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.